Welcome to Modern Art Blitz. My name is Matt Gleason. I'm your host for an hour of discussion of modern art. Well, not modern art as much as contemporary art, but contemporary art is a long Current four art? syllable word. So I said modern art because like I was just trying to be ironic and I'm not a big fan of irony these days. My co-host in this endeavor, the lovely Lisa Derrick. Yes. What is the SD on your shirt for? The SD stands for San Diego, and the little logo is the What's Baking logo, my favorite bakery. Your favorite bakery? What's Baking? They're delicious. They do gluten-free, organic, and... I hope they're paying for a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I, should at least, I should at least get a muffin out of the deal. Oh, honey, I'll make sure you get some muffins. Woo! Okay! <laughs> I'll, bring, I'll bring up a lot for Lee, and she can eat them in front of you. Okay, so... <laughs> our guests today are pretty awesome. But we also have somebody in the Skechers seat, an artist from far away Canada. Who traveled all the way here to Vetti. be with us today. This is Vetti, and he will be sketching our guests today. Our guests are immigrants from, Ooh. is that right? Are you guys immigrants? Yeah, yeah, yeah I okay. guess, yeah. <laughs> they are immigrants from New Zealand. Wow. And they are not Rarely here, we usually have Los Angeles artists, but they live now and work out of and are professionally associated with the lovely city, Sin City, <laughs> Las Vegas, Nevada. Give it up for Joe Russ and Matt Cooper. Wow. Thank you. You're actually our first uh, married couple Oh my God. Uh, right. On the show. And I have so many questions about that. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, hey, we're, so we're going to be taking a look at both uh, your art and your art. And um, let's get started. Why would you ever want to leave the paradise that is New Zealand? Do you want to feel this one? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, I always say that New Zealand is the most beautiful country. It's just a long way from anywhere except, of course, Australia. So um, both of us love travel, um, and this is the land of opportunity, and we've had the opportunity to come here, so yeah. here we are. Well, then the, the second question then is, why well, Las, Las Vegas? Vegas? Well, I, I guess kind of the main reason was uh, we could have come to the States and, you know, fed into an art scene in a major city, but instead of doing that, because we'd already, you know, spent... 15 years or so in the New Zealand art scene, we thought we might as well go to somewhere that had like an essence of Americana, you know, because we're coming to the States. Mm -hmm. So, and that, that, you know, Las Vegas isn't really known for art, but then again, the strip seems to be an, an amazing lowbrow art form. It's kind of a sculpture in itself. Right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, so we're looking at an artwork behind us. Uh, whose art is this? This is mine. Aha. Uh -huh. And what, what is the media here? So it's a, a mixed media um, spray painted background and then collaging on top. And how, how large would this be on a, on a gallery wall? Um, so this is kind of three pieces and you know each piece is this kind of size. Um, it's not one of the largest works uh, that I've done. Like are there like an 8 by 10? Basically 8 by 10? 16 by 20. Oh, so 16 mm -hmm. by 20. Okay. Yeah, that's a good yeah. size. Oh, okay, so it ends up being 60 feet, on 5 feet across? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. okay. There's a definite desert influence there. Is this work, in, does, have you found that, I mean, Las, Las Vegas is such a dichotomy. You've got the desert and that beautiful environment that's completely natural, except for the bodies that are buried there. <laughs> and then you've got the whole electrical complex. And that looks like a woman, I, I love the mm -hmm. centerpiece so much. It's so erotic and sensual and the worship of the phallic symbol and the goddess imagery it's really <laughs> awesome <laughs> i guess those are all the things that really intrigue me about you know living where we do is yeah the the seduction um of everything in the city but you yes, seen this amazing desert environment and coming from new zealand you know it is so different that it's made a huge impact i think on both of our work, you know, yeah, definitely. definitely elements of, you know, So we've got before and after. Before you lived in Vegas and after you lived in Vegas, the, the, the work has changed. You've been informed by Vegas? Uh, Topographically for, and yeah, more, eccentrically? Yeah, for me, it's more the concepts, I think. I mean, I, I got interested in Spanish colonial painting in New Zealand. So I was kind of wow. like pushing, you know, the, this kind of anachronistic 
imagery. Well, let's take a look. What, we're, we're looking at one here that has, uh, now this definitely has Spanish colonial oh, uh, so. things, but there's also the Stratosphere Hotel. So exactly, what's going yeah. on here? So I guess this was my first um, attempt at trying to get to grips with Las Vegas uh, as an artist. So I've used Shadan's uh, painting Monkey, the, the, mm -hmm. the singe, uh, Le singe. Uh, tradition in the 1700s where they used to dress monkeys up mm -hmm. um, to be you know, astronomers or painters, whatever. And uh, so it's kind of a, a reference to St. Anthony being tormented in the desert as well. Ah, yeah. just and a different desert, right? Yeah, exactly. And these kind of things like at the top there, uh, that way, you can see the mannequin piss, which is the Belgian figure, the little boy taking a piss. Wow. And it's got kind of a trickle-down effect, which related <laughs> to the uh, economy. We came over during the recession. Ah! So that, that was a big... Kind of a different vibe there in Vegas when nobody yeah. was gambling. Yeah, you know? exactly. It kind of changes the whole town. Um, a, a lot of... Now, I don't recall, did any casinos go out of business during the recession? Ooh. I don't write I mean, it's still, it's still a pretty good business, right? It you is. Know? It's still pretty I, we're good. We're going to take all your money. They, they had to uh, metamorphosize into other things. Okay. They, well, they yeah. make money now off different things than just gambling. A lot more yeah. entertainment yeah. now. Yeah. Restaurants. Oh, my uh, gosh. The and, bottle and, service. And, 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 um, and, the, and the bottle <laughs> service clubs. Yeah. Paris Hilton's going to show up. You've got to pay a million dollars exactly. to sit next to her, that yeah. type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, uh, so now you don't go to these nightclubs. or Now, do you go to the buffets, though? <laughs> Sometimes. I mean... Been to a couple of nightclubs. You got to you got to try it out. I guess, you know, I guess the thing is the, the, the stereotype of the artist. Or everybody in the, I know in the art world, you say Vegas, and they're like, oh, you know, they're so above that. And right. yet, you guys seem like you're just immersed in it, and and you're kind of like you're kind of reveling in it. I mean, is that is that fair to say? Like you're kind of going against the grain of the art snob? Uh, well, it's not that. I think it's just a different perspective. You know, coming from a place that you know is a socialist country in a lot of ways, and coming to a capitalist. Country. New Zealand is a socialist country? <laughs> well, Get off my show! <laughs> okay. Perhaps it hasn't been that since Norman Kirk was Prime Minister, but uh -oh. um, it, it's, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting take. And, you know, I mean, I think a lot of artists tend to feed from their, their context, you know, mm -hmm. well, what's surrounding them, what they're influenced by. And, you know, I, I think it's not a bad thing to go and search for, you know, the things that might interest you and be willing to move to places to... Yeah, soak it up. Well, then I guess that begs the question, how long did you give yourself in Vegas and how long do you, you intend to last there? Well, it's, yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> I, don't, I do not have any like fight here or something, well, right? One is of it? the things that people forget about Vegas is that aside from the gambling casino life, there's people who have real jobs there. Mm -hmm. They work in telecommunications. They, they're lawyers, they're accountants, they're cocktail waitresses. Let's, let's find out from the people who actually live there. Is that, <laughs> does that sound accurate to you? I thought they were all a bunch of degenerate I, gamblers. <laughs> <laughs> there definitely is that. Hmm. But it's funny, I mean, I have met a lot of people who are surprised when they hear the suburbs, you know, where suburbs in Las Vegas and there's nearly two million people there. You know, it's like they... Two million? Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's, it's just yeah. grown... They don't so even need the tourists now. if all those people would just go yeah. gamble their money away, exactly. right? Exactly. Oh, dear. So it's a, there's a lot to experience. And I guess we do go out there and, and we enjoy, mm. you know, immersing ourselves in, in the craziness of the town. And that's what is really attracts us as artists. I think a lot of writers, you know, find the same thing there. There's so much crazy, interesting kind of things going on that... It can feed you, you know. Mm. And, um, but without, without doing the Hunter S. Thompson thing. Ah, you the self destruction. Do How do you do it yeah. without getting into the self destruction that's so much fun? Yeah, it's like looking at the machinations of the city, you know, like working at how it operates because that's such an interesting thing to think about, like how all the casinos operate because uh -huh. you don't get to see behind the scenes. And when you kind of see little sneak peeks of that, it's like the Wizard of Oz, you know, what's behind that. Do you have any neighbors that work in the casinos breaking people's legs or anything? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I've known some people that were 86. Really? From yeah. a casino? <laughs> For what? <laughs> what? What are you getting? Well, um, it seems like such a rowdy crowd. You'd have counting? to be extra rowdy. <laughs> Well, just just from you know counting cards and things like oh, that. Oh, okay, yeah. gambling. Yeah, 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 yeah. They don't yeah. like that. They yeah. like to, they like to keep it in us. Okay, so we're looking at some more art. Right, we're going back and forth between the uh, wife and husband. Uh, Joe, what's this? <laughs> this is Desert Bloom, and I did this a few years ago. Um, again, I guess it's the 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 kind of woman in the in the desert, and um, you know, a bit of seduction, a bit of kind of almost 
out of space little I mean those are actually T cells in there but you know I use a lot of National Geographics um, mm -hmm. collect old you know magazines um, vintage playboys I kind of mix it all up so those so. are T cells you said mm -hmm. Wow that is great I love how you've turned them into a floral thing and the eye it's beautiful that's gorgeous so so uh, when you are cutting you're actually cutting these out I mean mm -hmm. it, that's got to take some dex it's got to take some dexterity there what do you use to actually do the cutting um, exacto knives and scissors oh yeah yeah and I really like the kind of the, the cut and paste the, the actual manual process um, I use digital also a little bit but usually the works will start with a um, yeah traditional manual process do you think art collectors, they still want that manual stuff? Or if you were doing these all digital, do you think it would affect your market? I think different, different people are attracted to different things. But I think there's definitely something about, I mean, collage has been around such a long time, hasn't it? But there's something about that, that process that people still really enjoy. And I guess it's like people who enjoy playing a vinyl record rather than, you know, listening to CDs. Uh -huh. You know, there's, there's still a real appeal with the actual object and, yeah, the kind of old school style of things. Yeah. And yeah. what cool. do you use for your fixative? Do you use like glue stick or Mod Podge or library mm -hmm. paste or? Yep, I use a lot of um, Mod, Mod Podge um, mm -hmm. and, and just kind of layer things. And it, to me, it's really important, A, that it's archival and also that it's wrinkle free. Like. I get mm. really bothered mm. about that, you know, so yeah. I, I do try and be quite, yeah, pernickety. What, what are we looking at here? Uh, oh, this is one of my performances. You did oh. a performance? Yeah, I've been doing a series, uh, an evolution series. So this is r obviously related to the painting, the trickle-down painting mm -hmm. okay. previously. And uh, this was a, a painting called, I think, Polemical Alchemy. So I, I dressed up as the Shadam monkey again and mm -hmm did a series of uh, paintings of shit and gold. And uh, <laughs> okay. so you can see there, okay. there's Looking like, the, a, like a pile of poop there, yeah. Exactly, and then I would paint um, some gold ingots or that, something like that. That, that kind of sums up the art world. Was that a commentary on Las Vegas or New Zealand or what was I, this? I uh, think it's that opportunity thing. I've been able to, you know, transform something from a base to something spectacular. The alchemical process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. So uh, I've done some other ones as well as a vampire. How, now, how much does it cost to uh, rent a monkey suit or do you own one? <laughs> no, I, I buy all my equipment. You actually... Make, make you, sure I have it for, uh, you know, You buy reference. your costumes? Yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. Wow. I'm I kind know. of... Uh, I'm, now, now, where have you performed? Um, I performed... Uh, at the, well, the last time was the um, Sydney Art Fair in Australia. I've also performed with the London Biennale. Uh, we did a satellite event in Las Vegas and had it all transferred to, to London for the main Biennale with um, David Medaglia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and um, what's the reception to this? And, and uh, it's kind of a two questions. I'll ask you two questions at once. Okay. What's the reception to this? And do you think the reception is... is the fact that you're new from New Zealand, does that sort of uh, contextualize the work? No, no, I don't think so. I don't think it overly contextualizes it. I, I mean, I, I'm more interested in what's happening internationally than just, you know, what's happening in New Zealand. I mean, I'm, you know, from New Zealand and all influenced by it in some ways. But I've always looked outside. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always looked to. But do they? Do they? I mean, you, like you're in town for the Kiwi Festival, right? Right. Yeah. So, so, but does that end up being like this thing about you that everybody knows, and and they look at your art through that filter, or do you, uh, do you get more? Oh, I'm just an international artist. Yeah, I think it's just more, uh, you know, an artist that makes this work that doesn't make sense for where I come from and what I look like. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But, but I'm fine with that. Wasn't there just recently a big arts festival in Las Vegas? And isn't Las Vegas becoming more aware that it's close enough to LA that they can have an art scene? Mm. What was that? What was that big festival? Life is uh, life, oh, is, life fun? is beautiful. Life is beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's quite fun, a big art okay. component. Uh -huh. Yeah, and there are um, a number of Californian artists who come over um, and take part and. Often there has been quite a lot of local artists involved as well, so mm -hmm. I definitely think there's a potential to build on on those kind of interactions more as well, and um, I hope that happens. 
So, uh, so did you participate in the Life is Beautiful Festival? We have previously, mm. yeah, not this last time. But Was that by choice or are they already 86 and the locals out bringing in the big stars? <laughs> it's changing a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, it depends who the curators are. Ah. Yeah. I so some of them a, want the local flavor and some of them, you know? Yeah, it, there's always that problem with, you know, needing someone local to represent mm -hmm. what you're doing and, um, uh, you know. There's it's a lot of focus on the, the big mural yeah. works now. So like a lot the street of art. Because yeah. the kids in. like it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's those darn kids. Okay, <laughs> what's, uh, what are we looking at Ooh. here? So this is um, Lulu Roxy, burlesque performer. And um, I've collaborated with quite a few performers on different projects. I mean, this is one of the things I love about um, Las Vegas. And of course, Los Angeles has the same kind of history of burlesque, you know, real tradition, um, which is something that, um, you know, New Zealand, we have it and there's quite an influence from, you know, other places, um, but just not the same history. So the, um, this was at P3 studio at the Cosmopolitan when they had the, um, the artist. Is this, is this a sculpture, of collage, a photo? What, what exactly? Yeah, on the window there we were doing a collaborative collage so guests would come in and contribute, you know, to the work. So I've done a few projects wow. like that that's fun, yeah, that everybody can kind of um, build. And because it was House of Paper Birds, um, it made perfect sense to me to have some, you know, burlesque and other um, performances while the residency was happening that had that bird connection. So, yeah, oh, okay. Fun. Cool, cool. How was the residency? This was in a casino. Mm -hmm. You had a residency in a casino in and you didn't thing. go broke. How did that happen? Awesome. <laughs> I know, it was tricky. Um, and it was actually uh, where all the restaurants were too, so uh -huh. it was oh. really tempting. You can go broke there faster oh, sometimes. I'm yeah. And love. there's never a chance at a restaurant to get your money back unless you choke to death. <laughs> so it's not, not, a, not, a, not, a, not good not, odds. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so how, how was it working in the casino? Did like casino people come in and say, hey, uh, let's go they play did. blackjack? Um, they did. And it was interesting. I think, you know, the, the casinos on the strips, you know, there are a lot of locals who do um, go along. There's also, of course, a lot of national visitors and also international. So it was a really interesting mixture of people. Okay. Um, so it was fun. Did you see somebody who had lost all their money come into you like, like I lost all my money, I, I, can I just hang out with you? Did that happen? I didn't actually have that. They were possibly just hanging out in there. I don't know what I don't, I don't think people advertise they, that kind they of stuff. They would not stuff. advertise that they <laughs> lost all their money because then they'd probably be kicked off the casino yeah. grounds. When you wow. win, you say that you've yeah. won. Ah, right. You don't say how much you've lost. Right. Oh, I always you brag, know. I lost my yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so hey, well, let's, let's move on and see more Art, I guess we're going back and forth between uh, Joe and this is Matt. What is this, oh, what's this diptych wow. here? Uh, so that's called Trouble and Strife. And I guess that really shows sort of the, the wider influences of what I look at. So there's a reference to uh, Dura's Melancholia print mm -hmm. uh, that's on the left. And on the right, it's uh, Piero della Francesca's San Michelle, I think. Okay, if yeah. you had a wrestling match between Durer and Della Francesca, who's gonna who's gonna win? Oh, uh, it's got to be Piero. Yeah. Yeah. Weight advantage, right? Yeah. Italian yeah. The, the <laughs> monu monumentality of the figures are yeah. what's gonna pin them down. Okay. Yeah. I meant physically, not. not I mean, this is not. There's no metaphor here. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is the real deal. So. And it's, this works. Probably got the closest reference to the currency, as well. Like you know, using art as a currency. Okay. So the the numbers that you've got represent the year that it's painted, but what it, what it, oh, what your, it, uh, your microphone's tickling yeah, your tits. That's all right. Okay. There we go. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> what it, what it is referencing is the images from the one dollar bill. Oh, the corner, the corner. So you got the, yeah, you got exactly. the date of the painting on each yeah. one, right? And so what happens is that the, um, the roundels or the vignettes in the middle, uh, you know, they become more obviously referencing the dollar bill. Hey, you know, you know, uh, Joe, you, you you wore green, and the green is disappearing into the. Into yeah, the am I kind of like just looking a little good. so cool? Yeah, so, <laughs> so cool. okay, magic. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's. Uh, so so now, um, and this is a diptych meant to be hung, you know, like that, side by the, side. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And and uh, the year obviously 2012. Uh, yeah, this was 2013. 2013. Yeah. Okay. Are you still f following this kind of Spanish colonial? I mean. Yeah, it's always going to be an influence. You um, you you also collect retabulos. 
Yeah, yeah, we've got a reasonably big collection of laminas from Mexico. Where do you, where wow. do you, you find these online or do you have to go down to Mexico? Uh, either from Mexico um, or there are dealers around that sell, antique dealers. Are there fakes out there? Oh, there's a lot. Yeah, How do you, it, can you tell the difference? Yeah, you can tell by the way that they're painted, by the, the way that the tin's rusted, the, the hand. One has yeah. to be a connoisseur like yourself? I think so. It doesn't, I don't know if it takes that long to spot them, but okay. yeah, there's do a certain you, style. Have you bought a few fakes in the past? I only... Accidentally? No, nothing accidentally. Only to kind of use as a marker. Oh, okay. I know this is a fake and I can prove yeah. that this is real because it doesn't look as... Because it looks much better than the fake. Yeah, because the stories are interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, All of a sudden, there's like, when Bart Simpson shows up in the Retabula, you know it's not... Exactly, a, yeah, or, okay. you know, modern technology or okay. you know, those yeah, yeah, sort of yeah, kind yeah. of things. It's yeah. like, <laughs> they're on their phone. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> so, oh wow, what, well, here's Whoa. a diptych uh, by Joe. What, what, what exactly is this? Is that a protea? It's actually based on the fruit of the Joshua tree. Oh. Yeah, very similar. Um, and again, this was a collaborative part of the collaborative um, project at P3 Studio. So a lot of people actually contributed to those two works. So but I just kind of designed... None of them were drunk casino patrons. They're all artists that you vetted. No, it was, they were drunk patrons. There were small <laughs> children. There was a real mixture. Oh, yeah. How really? cool is that? And they help you like cut, pay, cut, yeah, cut, cut the photos? Cut paste and, and, and choose, you know, where things... I mean, wow. I gave them a general guideline and they just went for it. You now, know, there now, was a, and the casino funded this? They, in um, conjunction with Art Production Fund, New York. The Art Production the Fund, wow. in New York. And, and did, cool. is this still ongoing? No, it's uh, now finished um, a few months ago now, though the issue was the venue. So hopefully they may start it again at some point. Um, but it was great while it lasted. Wow. We had a lot of artists come in, you know, from all, all around the country. And the Cosmopolitan Hotel mm -hmm. in, in, on the Strip. On the Strip. That's like, that's a, yeah. and that's a kind of a new one, right? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. How do you judge new in Vegas? Like how many, what, when, when does it go from being new to old? Like six weeks or six months or <laughs> six years? Yeah, it's tough. Because the Cosmo's been there six years. I still think it's a new hotel. It's still fresh. Yeah, you know, it's it had a, uh, quite a fresh approach. Is there any so. hotel on the Vegas Strip that's stale? I don't want to get, don't get into trouble. I know it's a small town, right? You're worried about, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we, I don't don't want, want we don't want you to end up, right, we don't, we don't want them to end up in the, in the desert there. Yeah, no, okay. But you know what bums me about Vegas is I loved the fantasy element where you would like stay, stay in an Egyptian temple, then mm -hmm. you'd mm -hmm. move along to uh, a medieval place and mm -hmm. all the interiors of the rooms were like that. But the new ones mm -hmm. are all just like, it's generic. We got to look, fuck. right? Yeah, they're kind of, yeah. Brentwood it's dance club kind of thing. It's yeah, I know. I yeah. hope that comes back. Yeah. I like I, it. No, I love my that. understanding was that they did that specifically so that they didn't have to remodel when the style became uh -huh. ugly. You know, because that, that happens every like 10 years. But you, now you go to the Palms, which was mm -hmm. really trendy mm -hmm. in 2000, and it's an ugly casino because it's made to look like trendy for the year 2000, mm -hmm. correct? But by yeah. sticking with yeah. that fantasy element, it you would never always be have dated. It. Knights in shining armor never go out of style, no matter oh how God. low True. the Excalibur discounts rooms. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh, but the, and the circus, circus, um, mm -hmm. that what's crazy about that is the um, amusement park in the top that's mm -hmm. so uh, out of control. Like there's Ferris wheels and there's roller coasters and there's teacups so that you never have to leave to go do anything fun. Tell the truth, you like it because of all the children. Ew. <laughs> Ew. I, think, I think that was where the monkey attacked that guy in yeah. Fear and Loathing Las Vegas. Yes, Fear yeah. and Loathing Las Vegas, the, the monkey attack. Probably the center of the book there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, everything changes after the lizard people and the monkey attack. So, so what do we have here? Oh, okay. So this is one of mine. It's called um, Limbo of the Journeyman. And this is obviously a very strong reference to the dollar bill. Oh, okay. And uh, this was kind of one about myself being a journeyman. You know, the idea of, you know, you're an apprentice, then you're a journeyman, and then you become a master. Right. Wow. So you learn, learn under the master, you travel uh, to research art and to get more experience and then you become a master and you do your masterpieces. Wow. And I, I don't know, I'd, I'd never want to kind of um, suggest that you get to mastery so easily. But this was, a, this was a way of like conceptually thinking about getting out of Las Vegas and seeing what's on the outside. 
not not way out of Las Vegas, but enough to kind of look and see what's actually going on on the perimeter of the city. I love how war you and strike. Oh, pardon me. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say I love how you incorporated the Masonic elements of the Eye of God with the mm -hmm. rays. War and strife on the element on the edges of Vegas. War and strife. No, well, I see the soldier there. Oh, that's a reference to uh, a Bosch painting called The Wayfarer. Oh, wow. Um, but it's interesting that you bring up the uh, Masonic references because um, he's got his leg pulled up with a kind of bandage exactly, around I it. Exactly, I saw that as well. That's which part is, of the initiatory. It's part of the initiation. Yeah. And, and when I saw that painting uh, when I was traveling in Europe, uh, I, you know, I didn't think it was necessarily a wayfarer, but it looked more like an, you know, a journeyman, someone looking to be enlightened. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's kind of moving away from the bright lights of the city, and you can see the, the city um, but behind me yeah. there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it, it's kind of like a, I did this in 2014, so we'd been there for four years. Right. And it was kind of a way of thinking about what's on the outside of Las Vegas physically as opposed to you know, just the strip. Did you, in your world travels, make the Bosch retrospective that was... Uh... Uh, <laughs> just recently? Yeah. Uh, I drove up there from Paris because I had a show in Paris at the same time wow. and uh, didn't realize that we needed tickets. Oh, no. So... Could there you was... scalp them to stub them? No, or... no. It was, it was very disappointing. But we did go to the Felician Ropes Museum in Belgium. Oh, wow. So that, so that was a bonus. Yeah. Okay, wow. Because yeah. yeah. Belgium, what's there to do other than the Garden well, of Earthly Delights, right? Uh, well, my, my art dealer in Paris says Belgium's a great country to drive through. <laughs> <laughs> so is the ride from Paris to Brussels, is that longer than the L.A. to Vegas? Uh, it's, yeah, it's about four hours, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. three hours. But no desert, no, 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 um, no desert, just lots no of... No world's uh, largest thermometer, no, no mad no, Greek. There's not there, a there's mad, no Greek mad Greek between <laughs> Brussels and Paris. Okay, well, we know what ride we want to take. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, I know we're, we're staggering now. This is a performance? Yes, this is from, um, again, P3 Studio. And this was one of the uh, performers there as well, um, who I then incorporated into a, a short video using the performers and um, scenes from both Las Vegas and the desert surrounding. So this was um, St. Thomas, it's called, mm. isn't it? Which was a town that was exposed when the Lake Mead waters have dropped. Oh, so, a town? Yeah, when, yeah. The, when the lake was originally it rose, everyone had to leave and it was abandoned. Nice and of them to like let people know. I know hey, you yeah, might want to get they, out of here. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> Whoa. They had to actually jump in boats and, and um, some of them didn't want to go. But it's an interesting place because now it's, you know, you can see the dwellings again. Because of the drought. Of desert, because of the drought. Yeah. Now, what's going to happen with the drought? You guys are insiders. I mean, help me out here. Are we? Uh, are, did did we get enough rain last year? No. I mean, it's rain, LA's yeah. uh, LA's kind of a problem because it takes most of its water from Lake Mead. I mean, Las Vegas does as well, but we only take <laughs> about three percent because we've got. Wait, we're we're drinking your water? Yeah. I drink your milkshake. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, why doesn't Vegas? put solar panels on the hotels and put in drought resistant plants, I wonder. That's just happened recently. Yeah, they mm. yeah the, the casinos yeah. have just gone to solar and they, they've broken away from the, the single energy company in Nevada. They finally successfully did that? Yeah. And, it, yeah. and it was revealed that Warren Buffett owned the single energy company, did you know that? Yeah. I don't want yeah. you to end up at the bottom of the lake here if I'm <laughs> saying some info that, that isn't supposed to. He no, loved, it's all, he, it's all he's like exposed. this great liberal billionaire, but boy, he loves his own monopolies. Doesn't exactly. He? <laughs> help help, help liberal us out billionaire. Here. So you yeah. can go explore this, this mm -hmm. abandoned village by, and mm -hmm. what's it called? St. Thomas? St. Thomas, mm -hmm. yeah. I and doubt. I doubt that. Oh, that was so bad. Sorry. Oh, wow. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Wow. Okay. Incredulity. Oh, yeah. Catholic damage puns. <laughs> oh boy, Catholic yes. damage. It was a. It was a Mormon settlement, and it moved back and forth when the the state line from Utah to um, Nevada moved because it was moving because of um, tax. Issues. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. It, Let's just move the town there so we don't have to pay yeah, taxes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. But it's a really interesting place, and it's, it's not overly well-known. 
Uh, the, the problem with tourism now, when you want to see something cool, it's already online, so everybody knows about it. It's not like it used to be where if you hooked up with the right person, you were really going to see something cool, yeah. right? Yeah. I know LA, like all the cool stuff, like, you know, people from out of town know it better than us locals. You know? <laughs> oh, okay. Have you been out to Area 51, which is near Las Vegas? No. No, do, no, do not admit that. <laughs> eh, eh, I don't want anybody talking about that on my show. We love okay. the federal government here. You, you can't officially go there. <laughs> Yeah, you cannot officially go there. Well, okay. no, but like the little alien and like the, the, the touristy part oh, near yes. Area 50. Oh, uh, yeah. what's that little town called? Is it Rachel? Yeah. There's a cool gift store yeah. and you can hang out with aliens. Yeah, exactly. So. You can go to the letterbox. That's for, there's, yeah. a, there's a letterbox that's covered in stickers and yeah. painted alien heads and things like that, but I don't think you can that's, go I didn't mean like That's as far as you've gone. Exactly. That's as far as we're going to go with that <laughs> line of questioning. What are we looking at here? Oh, okay, this is one of mine and this is a an obvious reference to uh, Spanish colonial painting and Mexican ex voto paintings. Oh, I so uh, this is a, a painting that I did for a friend of mine in, in London. Uh, his name's Niall McDevitt and he's a, a Blake scholar, William Blake scholar. And uh, he put together a petition to stop the encroachment of buildings being built around, uh, I think it's Bunhill, Bunhill Fields, which is where William Blake's grave is. And uh, so I, I, I do these paintings for people, they're either commissioned or I just want to do them for people and, and send them to them. So this one particularly has text underneath it, which has a, you know, a legend explaining what the situation is in it. In the that, tradition of, of the, the, these, the Spanish colonial of, paintings? Yeah, of Mexican paintings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so this is the first one with an actual website on it. So wow. you, can, you can go to the web address and and, and sign the petition. Oh, wow. From the painting. Because <laughs> yeah. that's the best way technologically to let people know how to sign exactly, an online yeah. petition is through paintings on a wall in a gallery. Well, it's an odd thing. It's, it's, I, I don't know if it's ever been done. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> but, so what attracted you to Mexican colonial painting and especially ex voto and retablos? I mean, I love them, but I'm from here. What, what appealed to you about them? Uh, well, I've always been interested in imagery. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I, I don't know how the Catholic thing came about. I think my, fa uh, my father came from a Catholic background, but um, they're not Catholic anymore. But it's I more fascinating when it's not pushed on you every Sunday. I, I think so, yeah. I don't have the guilt complex. So. Ah. <laughs> and I have a couple relationship questions for you. Do you two work in the same studio? Are your studios in the house? And how did you two meet? Uh -oh. We have actually shared studio space before, mm -hmm. haven't we? We have managed to do that reasonably successfully, I think, mm -hmm. though sometimes our music choices have been a little bit different. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> spill, spill, what kind of musics do you like? <laughs> yeah, when, when Slay is kind of playing it. <laughs> the Fall, I have, I have a little difficulty listening to The Fall, oh. some of The Fall. The you Fall? Know, when I'm working. The Fall. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you and you don't like fall? Slayer? You, you know oh, I know The Fall, the fall? yeah. 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 Uh, no, it's me that plays Slayer. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, late at night. So you there. play the old people's music? Yeah, and she's exactly. still into like the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, to take, not to take sides here. <laughs> but most of the time, actually, we, we manage to, yeah, to work together fine. pretty well. We do have separate um, studio spaces now. Is, is Black Sabbath the common ground? Help me out here. <laughs> What's the common ground? Dimmer. Oh, okay. Uh, Dimmer? Yeah, uh, New Zealand band. Oh, well, there you yeah, go. Okay. Oh, well. We do actually listen to a lot of New <laughs> Zealand music. take still. the Kiwi out of New Zealand, yeah. but you can't take <laughs> the New Zealand out of the Kiwi. So, exactly. and how did you two meet? Uh, we met, I was uh, advising for a, a, a man's art collection, and I, I knew Joe's younger sister, Catherine, who's a photographer, and I, I saw it advertised in a show. I wanted this guy to buy some of the work. Mm -hmm. And we went up and I saw Joe's work and I was like, this is great, kind of really gritty Nan Golden work. And I was trying to get this guy to buy it. And he was just like, I, I, I don't know if I can hang it on my wall. I worry what people would think about mm -hmm. me, you know, having it on the wall. <laughs> so uh, uh, I ended up buying some and then we met and we swapped some more work and um, wow. we curated shows together. And yeah, it's... Well, I think it was the <laughs> similar interests, you know, like, yeah, yeah we'd, we'd go and hang out and and look at art and um, just, you know, which is great that we do have a lot of similar interests because mm -hmm. we still enjoy, you know, doing these things together. Mm. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. What, uh, so you basically, you bought her art to... <laughs> 
Well, I don't, I didn't know her, and you I was just know. like, I've got oh, the money. Sure. I've, I've so got the money. So you actually was a, you were attracted to her through, through her, her art. art. So that that is such a beautiful thing. That's really what are we lovely. looking at here? Oh, and what are we? Yes. So this was a collaborative project at the Life Is Beautiful Festival oh. um, a couple of years ago. So yeah, it was nature. Um, the theme all the different artists were working with was inspiration and um, so yeah working with the desert nature as inspiration for this project and yeah people just you know chose whatever image um, you know really spoke to them and then also added you know um, their own text if they wanted to about you know what was it about that that inspired them and um, yeah just kind of took over the walls in the space so over three days. Was it was it a good time? Kids loved it, or guy? Kids what was loved he? It. Kids. When we say I, to me, kids could be in their thirties. So help me out here. Yeah. What's what do you? I mean, what was the age range there? Definitely, there were a lot of um, the younger kids. I think often there's not projects, you know, especially just out there and I guess festivals, you know, that are very uh, child friendly. And this was, but yeah, just you know, all ages. But I think the the color and just kind of taking part, you know, like art can. As we all know, you know, for some people, art is a little bit um, possibly intimidating or just, you know, not confident about how to kind of take part in it. So these kind of projects, you know, are really welcoming that, you know, people can just, they know that they can cut things out. They can, they can write stuff, they can stick, you know, paste, so. Was yeah. most of it pretty bad? I actually have kept all the individual little segments because I found them really interesting in what people chose to, to write on them too. Okay. So, um, no, I think, well, I'm going to do something else with them at some point. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, future I, future I like art them. project. Yeah. Now, have you two ever collaborated together and, or are you planning on that? Is that something you think that would be fun to do? Yeah, no, we've is that collaborated. A, wait, yeah. is that a way to ask them if they're having kids? <clears throat> No. <laughs> the yeah. ultimate collaboration. <laughs> no. uh, we're, we we've, haven't done that. We've made artworks together mm -hmm. before where uh, I'll paint a backdrop um, and Joe will collage on top of it. Wonderful. And then I'll paint over the top of it and Joe might collage back on it. Where, where are we now? Oh, okay. So this was our most recent exhibition and this was an exhibition uh, at Zoya Tommy's called the... Uh, oh, I've forgotten the title. The Salon of Salon of Desert Martyrs. It's wow. And uh, so the, there's four works that look like a um, evened up black flag logo. Um, those were collaborations that Joe and I did together. Oh, great. Mm. Where, where, and where, where exactly was this? And so Zoya Tommy's in Houston, Texas. Houston. Now, yeah. is that a good art scene? Mm, yeah, really, interesting, really uh, interesting art scene. It's young, but. Um, there's kind of the money and the enthusiasm to really keep there it going. Too. Great yeah, great the Manil's fantastic, mm, yeah. the rice is fantastic. They've got really good supporters down Where, there. Where you travel a lot. I don't travel at all, so I'm I'm you're you're my guide here. <laughs> Where in the United States is it really happening for artists? Oh, <laughs> don't say LA either, okay? Gotta, Aside from yeah. LA, where no, is no, no, it no, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I mean, that's a tricky question. It, it's like wherever you go, uh, and especially wherever we go, whether it's like Denver or New York or uh, Seattle, if you hunt out the scene downtown, then you know there, there's always the local heroes. There's you know there's people doing really interesting stuff, but not showing nationally or internationally. Um, I don't know. It's it's. That's a really tricky question. We do come to LA a lot you yeah. know, for the art here, um, but also we get to New York when we can. We're going to um, I've art heard of Basel, that town, Miami. New York. Yeah, New, New York. York. <laughs> Have you been to Old York? Is there a comparison? I've been to York. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Wow. It's, yeah. it's, Is it a lot like the city that tried to be copy it? The, uh, new, the <laughs> New York? Well, probably the original Amsterdam kind of look, probably. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. The little streets. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 is the is this scene at the at the New York City? Is that is that um, is that a happening art scene? <laughs> <laughs> and do you find Manhattan more or less happening than like Williamsburg? Have you been to Brooklyn? There's Williamsburg's kind of flattened out a bit. Yeah. The arts, and they've all moved down to Greenpoint. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's how hip we are. See. <laughs> yeah. We're so provincial now. Yeah. So, so, um, but so you come to LA a lot. I mean, yeah. what's where? Where is it at? If, if an artist from New Zealand calls you and says, "Hey, look, where should I move?" 
to build my career in the United States? What city should I, what city should I live in? Not Vegas. <laughs> I don't think we've we've, asked that question, we've never we? been asked that question. No. I, I think people just presume that you go to LA or you go to New York. Yeah, it's still it's still that. And I mean, there, there's New Zealand artists that have done that. Um, uh, but it's working for you in Vegas. Yeah, well, it's, I guess it's working because we've got the connections outside in different countries. And, and you're always somewhere else. In fact, you're yeah. never home. Who's watching your house oh, right no, we're, now? We're, we're home a lot. We, we, get, we kind of get that a lot when we'll go out to a party or go to an art event in Las Vegas and people say, uh, I've just seen you've been traveling all the time. It's like, no, no I've been here for six months. <laughs> <laughs> Never post old Facebook photos of your vacation because yeah, exactly. people immediately think you're there and then they try to rob your house right. and it's very <laughs> embarrassing. It's complicated. You know, so what's so. this? This is um, Desert City Bird Life. So it was a, a kind of long um, collage I did of the, you know, the women, the party girls, I guess, of Vegas um, with some of the the casinos in the, um, the city and then the, the kind of rocks underneath it all. That um, is incredible. How big is, this, how big is this collage? The original um, piece is probably not huge. This is actually one of the ones so that I did digitally um, blow up. Okay. Um, so it's um, ended up being billboard size. Um, oh my God. For the art pop billboard. And where, so, where, where's the billboard physically at? Um, they, they, they move around actually. There was, um, there's a digital one um, downtown near the freeway because of course, yeah, great spot for billboards. Um, there were five artists, um, Art Pop, are doing you know, different cities. So th this was the first time they um, had done it in Las Vegas. So there were five different artists that they move around on different billboards. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. So, so is this like, popular in Vegas to fund art on billboards, or is this just one initiative? Or? This is a new initiative, um, yeah. but it looks like it will hopefully continue. Okay. Um, AIGA, the design um, agency, worked with Art Pop. So, um, yeah, hopefully we'll see more of this. Um, and I guess that's one of the things, you know, Vegas, the, the whole commercial thing, it's great to see the billboard companies getting in behind this as well and interspersing, you know, a bit of art for the commuters as well as the... Uh, is it, is it pretty heavily vetted though, so that, that your, uh, oh look, your dress is, oh, your dress was uh, cooperating, was well, your, your <laughs> yeah. green dress was, was cooperating <laughs> with the green screen there. What, uh, is it, is, is there a lot of vetting going on? With... I mean, is there a lot of red tape to get into, uh, and to get they, into this billboard project. And then can they reject your billboard because it may not yeah. hold up the aesthetics that they want? Well, they did a selection process, so who knows, yeah. you know, what yeah, yeah. Was, was kind of edited out, I guess. So, yeah. so I know, I'm trying to count how many Vegas artists I know. I know you two, obviously. I know Jerry Misko. I know Mark Brandvik. Mm -hmm. I, and I, and I've met socially a little bit David Ryan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've never met, who's the big guy with the stripes? Mm -hmm. Tim, Tim Bavington. Bavington. Tim Bavington. I don't mm -hmm. believe I've ever had the pleasure. Is that it? Is that, did I just describe, is that the Vegas scene right there? Help me out here. And then there's a, there's a sex, there's an erotic art gallery. No, 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 well, yeah, no in, the, in the fine <laughs> art, in the, in the real art world, there's a, and there, and there was Dave Hickey. Dave Hickey was the one. Right, right? well that, that's where the, the kind of grouping starts because there's the, you know, the Hickey school. The Hickey school? Yeah, right. and there, there's a few artists. I, I, I bet I can guess what the initiation to get into that school is. Okay, mm. no, okay. Kiss of, yeah. A kiss of death? Okay, so, 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 okay, so, so, so the people Hickey like school. Tim Bavington, David Ryan, Sean Slattery, Sean Hummel, uh, they're all still living in Las Vegas, still Sush, making their work. Sush, Sush Mashida Mashida as well. Okay, but, and, uh, but Dave Hickey's mm. gone. Yeah, he's mm. in does he ever Santa come back? Fe now. Does, uh, he comes back and does talks on the odd occasion. Wanders through the desert, like uh, with a beard and, and a stick. <laughs> Old man time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know him and haven't had anything to do with him, so I, I'm not privy. So then, to what's that well, okay? So that's what the, like the international art world is always associated with, um, with him. Right. But uh, he put Vegas on the map, so to speak. But what he really did was yeah. put his buddies at UNLV on the map, is the rumor I heard. Uh, yeah, he put his students on the map. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely helped with that. And I, I don't think that's such a bad thing. I mean, it's a very specific aesthetic that he championed. And that, you know, uh, um, it actually gave rise to a 
popularity and collecting locally, which I think was really good. So net gain by having him as the 800 pound gorilla in the cage, for, for, <laughs> yeah. in the small cage yeah. for that many years. Well, yeah. who else is there? Yeah. You know, I, I think the, you know, the, the moderators of, of taste, say, um, who have access to the outside art world are kind of few and far between. So I think, you know, I know that people have a lot of problems with him, but I, I think he's a great writer. And I think he did a lot for the scene to, to promote it. What's I mean, it been like since he's gone? It's, uh, it's kind of decreased, but I think- The actual was, art scene yeah, bodies at the art fair. But then I think that was also because of the recession. Okay. You know, Vegas was hit so hard, mm -hmm. whether it was you know, in the casinos or the housing market. Um, Has it bounced back? It's getting there. It's coming back. Yeah. It's and coming back. But it's in transition, I think, would be a good way to, to describe it. Perpetually in transition. Yeah. So, and, and it's more, and it's less gambling focused now, more mm -hmm. party, party, party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The table service and bottle service are the things that apparently bring in. Bring in a lot the of big dough. DJs. Yeah, the DJs. Yeah. Big DJs. Mm -hmm. And you guys aren't DJing on the side here. No, no. though no. We, we were talking about that today. A lot today. of employees. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah, we're talking about ways of making a, Your next a big extra scratch. <laughs> okay, well, we're really, uh, we, got, we got just five minutes and I want to definitely look at the sketch, but, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give uh, Vetti just a little more time on the sketch. What, uh, what's the future? What projects do you have? We're, we're, this interview is taking place in October of 2016. What's coming up for the both of you? Goodness. Uh, Apparently your career me? just ended. <laughs> <laughs> it's done. After all, you're shit talking about Vegas today. Uh, <laughs> We've just actually had a, a couple of shows um, back to back this weekend. So in some ways it's like, okay, now I need to focus on uh, what comes next. And mm. you've got um, things yeah, happening I've, overseas. I've got a <laughs> show in Brooklyn and New York at Room Gallery in December, straight after mm -hmm. Miami. And then, um, I'm in an art fair in Germany, and then I'm doing a print project with Idiom Gallery uh, in Paris. Oh wow! Yeah. So you just man, you're, do you have to speak like ten languages to do all this? No, I mean I get by just with faking the accent, you know, ah, just ah. <laughs> saying English words and yeah. French accent and things. No, it's it's kind of bad that I don't speak. But yeah. English is the lingua franca of today. Everyone speaks English. Do you know if I translate that, what you just said? You just said, in <laughs> translate, you said English is the French language. Well, no, but lingua franca is the term that means yeah. language. I was making literal. a pun. I, I was making literal. I was making an intellectual pun, Matt, and you reduced it down. It's not intellectual when you have to tell people it's intellectual. <laughs> I, I know. I was you, you. Jabba, you're just being a booger today. <laughs> you're being a big <laughs> booger. So, are there artists who do the kind of art you do, like surrealist, I don't want to say contemporary or modern, but you guys have a very surrealist narrative quality. Are there other artists like that in Las Vegas? Is there a small or burgeoning or like big enough for like a sit down table? Is there a Las six? Vegas aesthetic? Apparently not. <laughs> no, I don't. So you guys so. are really the People only ones who are. Is it is it is it is the is the Vegas scene just like a bric-a-brac of who ended up there? Yeah, there's uh, there's all sorts of different art in Las Vegas. It's you know a smattering of everything in the contemporary art world. Have they ever called you and said, "Hey, we need a mural in the suite tonight"? No, that nothing would like be that. Right? No, <laughs> <laughs> nothing like that. It's it's Soon. studio practice, really. Okay, yeah. real quick. Most money you ever won gambling in one night. Oh, a hundred and forty dollars. Wow. <laughs> Joe? I don't really gamble. Wow. Wow. Well, you took a gamble by coming here today. Yeah. Art love and modern <laughs> art blitz. Okay. All right. Let's, let's see. Have, this is Vetti. And it's, his website is vexart.com, correct? V-E-X? E-D. Here we go. Okay. Wait, let's put it with them because they Vexed are. Vexart.com. There you go. Hold that up to the camera. There, there you go. go. So, so uh, Betty was just walking by my gallery this afternoon, and I said, hey, you look like a sketcher. And you know what? You're going to have a line of artists. When's, when's, the, when's the last time you uh, did a life, life sketching of two people sitting in front of you? Uh, it's been years. Years? Okay. All right. Well, thanks to Betty. Thanks to my wonderful guests. Thank you. Matt Cooper and Joe Rust.
My lovely, she takes more grief for me than anybody but my wife, <laughs> co-host, Lisa Derrick. Or my, my, or my head was on the platter there, you were doing that. Yeah, I know, that's the whole idea, <laughs> head on the platter. I'm your host, I've been your host, and I will continue to be your host. My name is Matt Gleason, and this has been Modern Art Blitz. You know, this is our 41st episode. Wow, and we are archived on modernartblitz.com and on YouTube, and you're watching us live at 5 on dronebox.com. And if you're watching the archive, you already know that. <laughs>